Hello, welcome back to Berkshire Botanical Garden. I'm Dora Mead, Director of Horticulture. Today we're back in the vegetable garden and I'm going to show you how to direct seed and how to transplant seedlings into the garden. First I will direct sow some peas. Peas are a cool season crop. They thrive in the cool weather of spring. They can be sown in the garden as soon as the frost is out of the ground and the soil in the beds can be worked. This bed has already been prepared by adding compost the way I showed you in the second video of this series. Peas are climbers, so they need a trellis to climb on. I'm going to plant them around the outside of this round trellis and a few in the middle inside the trellis. Looking at the seed package, it tells me that the peas should be planted at a depth of 3 quarters of an inch and 2 inches apart. So I will make a 3 quarter inch deep furrow with my soil knife. You could also use a stick or your finger. These seeds are big, so I will plant them individually all around the trellis. Next I'll cover the furrow with my hands and gently tamp the soil down to make sure that the soil makes contact with the seeds. It's always a good idea to label your crops so you won't lose track of what you have planted where. Put the seeding date on the label as well for future reference. Finally drench the newly planted bed. The seeds won't germinate unless they are watered well. It's best to water with a watering can or hose that has a water breaker so the stream of water is gentle and does not wash the seed away. Whenever the soil starts to look dry on the surface, water again. Next I'm going to direct sow some salsify. This is a root vegetable that looks a bit like a long parsnip with creamy white flesh. It has a mild artichoke flavor with a trace of licorice and has a pretty flower that is also edible. Salsify is one of the crops that do not transplant well, so it's better to direct seed it in the garden instead of storing the seed inside. Looking at the package, it tells me to plant the seed at a depth of half an inch to three quarters of an inch. To space the rows at least four to five inches apart and space the seed one inch apart from each other in the furrow. It also says on the back of the package that the seed has to be soaked for 24 hours before planting. This will help the seed germinate easier. So I have pre-soaked the seed and will pour it through a strainer to get rid of the water. I'm going to plant four rows of salsify in this raised bed and I have run strings to help me plan out the spacing. I'm making the furrows by running the stick along the yellow string at a depth of half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Since the seeds are wet, they are sticking together, so I will place them individually with my fingers instead of sprinkling them in. Then cover the seed, press the soil down gently to make sure to make seed to soil contact. Label the crop. Finally, water carefully so you don't wash the seed away. The amount of time it takes for germination to occur is different from seed type to seed type. Some seed germinates within a few days. Salsify takes 14 to 21 days to germinate, so you'll have to be a little more patient with this crop and make sure to water if the soil looks dry. Now I'll plant some Brussels sprouts that we started in the greenhouse. By starting seedlings inside, you can get a jump on the season. This is especially helpful if a crop takes a long time to mature. Brussels sprouts require about 80 days to mature and they love cool weather. I have run some strings in this bed as well to help me figure out the spacing of the Brussels sprouts. These plants get big, so I'm spacing them further apart. Once I have made a line along the strings with my trowel, I can remove the strings so they don't get in the way of the planting. When the roots are well developed, like with these Brussels sprouts, it's important to open up the root ball a little before planting to encourage root growth into the surrounding soil. Tamp the soil in firmly around the root ball of the new plant to ensure contact with the surrounding soil. 
Many vegetables are fine to plant out now at the end of April, even though we're still a month away from the last chance of frost, which is the end of May here in the northeast. Next I'll put in the label and drench the new plants with water. Let's plant some onions now. This is another root crop, so it's important to make sure the soil is well tilled before planting. I have laid out the bed with three rows and I'm going to space out the seedlings four to five inches apart to give the onions lots of room to develop. An easy way to space a crop evenly is to cut a stick to the size needed and use that for spacing. These seedlings are planted in four packs and since the seedlings are pretty young, the root system is not that developed yet. And so I have to be extra careful to make sure the root ball does not fall apart when I take it out of the pack. I like to turn the four pack upside down while holding the plugs in place with my other hand and let all four plugs slide into my hand at once. Because onions take three to four months to reach maturity, it's important to start them inside and plant them out early in the season. Finally, I'll add a name tag and water the onions well. This concludes our four-part series on how to start a vegetable garden. I hope you will try it at home. It's a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me at Berkshire Botanical Garden.